Welcome to the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast with Vicki Nedling. You are about to discover impactful lessons that help you grow as an individual, grow your confidence, and find the positive and good within you, so you powerfully and authentically become the best version of yourself. Be sure you visit our website at www.findyourleadershipconfidence.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now tune in, get ready, and enjoy the journey of emerging as a leader of exception in the 21st century. Welcome everyone to the Find Your Leadership Confidence podcast. I'm your host, Vicki Nettling, coming to you from Roswell, Georgia. The goal of this podcast is to bring topics and guests that will empower you to become that confident leader and take your business or your life to the next level. Today, I am very pleased to have with me Donald Dunn. Let me tell you a little bit about him. He entered into the Army in 1994 and spent 20 years in the military. During the 20 years, he spent 68 months in deployment and combat tours. Nine months was in Bosnia and the rest in Iraq and Afghanistan. After the military, Donald opened up his own company in the trucking industry, and he closed it shortly after COVID. Since then, he started a podcast called Spirits and Stories with Donald Dunn to highlight the struggles and the success of our veteran community and he is building a nonprofit called Heroes Voices Media Foundation to help veterans reach their dreams while getting therapy doing it. He has just released his first book called Echoes of War. So today we're going to talk about music that comes from stories that were lived and told. Please join me in welcoming my guest, Donald Dunn. Donald Thanks for having me. I just love, you know, one of the reasons I started podcasting was because there are so many stories out there that are left untold because people don't think that they're worth anything, that they mean anything, but they don't understand how they change people's lives just hearing them. So I'm so happy that you're doing what you're doing uh, and especially working with our veterans. So can't wait to get into this with with you all right we always start though with that easy question where do you call home where do you live so i'm actually kind of split right now i am <laughs> i am in uh missouri and uh taking care of my mom mm. and my wife and kids are still living in our house in uh, georgia a uh, little town called jessup georgia ah yeah i know jessup awesome well, you know, I can feel what you're feeling because I, my mom's not that great right now, and uh, they're in Pittsburgh. So, for a while there, I was spending my time between here and Pittsburgh. Yeah. And uh, so now my other brothers and sisters are taking the the weight, and uh, it is it's a tough tough road. Yeah. But bless you for doing it. Thank you. All righty. I gave you just, I gave the audience just kind of highlights, but share your story about, you know, what, what drove you to do what you're doing today in, and you had such a long time in the military. So many stories, I'm sure. Um, So just briefly share a little bit about your background. Um, Well, like, like you said, I I came in in 94 and uh, I got married right out of high school. So that was my motivation to come in, I needed a, a job to take care of the family. And uh, the military was a great place to grow up. Um, I did 10 years in the special ops community. And that's where the majority of those deployments came from. Um, the nine months that I was in Bo- Bosnia was with a mechanized infantry unit. Mm-hmm. And then uh, a nine month tour to Iraq was also with a, a light infantry unit. But uh you know, but at, by the time I got out of the military, I was, I was not the same guy I was when yeah. I came. Um, I was struggling, didn't want to admit it. Um, the the basic story that you hear over and over, and uh, I I did open up 
my own business that had always been uh, a dream of mine mm -hmm. when I was thinking much more clearer and yeah. uh, did it at the wrong time in my life. I, I owned the trucking company for six years and uh, I did close it because of the cost and, and COVID, but um, the truth be told, I don't, I don't know how it made it six years. Um, mm. You know, I, I made a lot of bad decisions just from inexperience and not really thinking things clearly through. Mm -hmm. And so when I got out of uh, the trucking industry, I got out because I had finally got some help. Mm. And uh, when the fog had cleared and I looked back at the wake that I had created, um, it was not a pretty sight. Yeah. And so... I, uh, I knew I had to close the business. Um, that particular business is not very healthy for somebody that's struggling mentally. It's a very lonely job mm -hmm. and, and it's a lot of time away from the family. Uh, yeah. so I struggled with that. <clears throat> and, uh, while I was out on the road, I was taking care of my mom about every couple weeks or so I would drive through Des Moines and stop mm -hmm. at the house for a weekend and make sure she was okay and do her honeydew list and so forth. And uh, I had finally decided and, and she had finally got to the point where she needed somebody living with her. So luckily I found a job in Missouri and uh, I closed my business and that was probably one of the best things that I ever did. Um, mm. To be honest, I don't know that any of this would have been happening had that not happened. Um, so my old first son is the one that offered me the job and uh, I took it, moved my mom to Missouri with me and uh, we share a house here. And uh, <clears throat> me and my uh, old first son, we decided to start a podcast. We called it a podcast. It really wasn't a podcast at that time. <laughs> it was, it was us releasing one video a week and uh, going Facebook live and, and uh, having a good time with, what was supposed to have just been other soldiers that we served with. I mm -hmm. mean, that's really who we were targeting because we had had a few that had, had committed suicide. And so yeah. we just kind of wanted to bring them back into our fold. And uh, my buddy owned a, a gun business and, and uh, we filmed the podcast in his gun room. We were in his gun room all the time. That was kind of our <laughs> sanctuary. And so, uh, when we decided to start this podcast, we, uh, we decided to call it two drunk dudes in a gun room. <laughs> and uh, we didn't really care about the name because we weren't expecting anybody to be looking yeah, for it. Right. We wanted some of our old friends. Well, the funny thing about it is, is about three quarters of the way through season one, um, I kind of discovered that uh, podcasting had became kind of therapeutical for me. I mean, I was, I was talking about stories that I had never even shared with my family with wow. strangers that I didn't serve with, but I knew they had served and, and I just felt relaxed to talk. Um, they could relate. Yeah, absolutely. And so after season one, my buddy dropped off and uh, I left the name the same for season two in case he decided to come back on, but that's kind of where um, things really changed um so i had some veteran musicians on and i discovered that they've got a bigger problem than what most podcasters have um mm. for me i didn't care if one person watched my show or ten thousand people you know it was mm. about therapy for myself yeah and, uh but when i started having these veteran musicians on well they're trying to put food on their table by living out their dreams mm. um you know, and I kind of thought about this for a while and it didn't seem right that, you know, somebody had a dream as a, as a kid, put his dreams on hold, served our country for X number of years. And then after that was over with, was struggling to try to pick those dreams back up. Yeah, uh, I kind of felt like we owed them uh, a hand up, you know? Yeah. And so to do that, I, I thought I had this harebrained idea. Um, <laughs> why don't we just start a radio station that plays nothing but veteran music? Mm -hmm. um, and at that time, I, I did not know anything about radio. I did not know much <laughs> about 
copyright and but and you all. did it anyway i did um so with the help of uh, an organization called operation encore they uh they kind of kept me in the legality side of things and uh another uh veteran musician named shannon book kind of helped me stay in the the guardrails when i started going off to my own little side <laughs> and uh between all of them you know i did it i got i got licensed um so we're licensed with uh bmi and and uh, uh mass cap and uh so we got the rights to play just about 99 percent of the songs out there um awesome. in america anyways and so when i did that it just it was like some it was like people out there just needed it yeah um, it grew rapidly and i i just i couldn't believe it and so as we were growing um we're now up to three stations um we yeah. have what's called uh it is now called veteran voice radio it has uh simplify country that is our country channel mm -hmm. we have uh, ranger rock wave that is our rock and roll um channel and then we have what's called vet mix it's just a mix of all different sites kinds of genre and uh it's uh that was actually our original station was vet mix um as as we grew i think you know we started out with literally a bunch of podcasters and one musician and oh, wow. now we're probably somewhere around 70 75 musicians and five six hundred songs somewhere around there and uh <clears throat> it was amazing to watch because uh you know people were hearing songs about the singer's life what he did yeah. um, the, his feelings you know uh, the struggles the the winds all of these were things that could, people could hear and and relate to whether you served or not, it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everybody asked, you know, what the big plan was and how much it was going to cost to be a member. And it, it, it's absolutely free. The goal is to get these people's music out there so that people can hear them. And, and who knows, maybe recommend them to a, a VFW event or, or something where they can put a little bit of food on their table and, and live out their dreams. So that's, you know, that's where this nonprofit started. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> I decided because how much um, podcasting had helped me to bring podcasting into this as well. So we started what's called military United podcast streams. And uh, the purpose behind it is to help veterans document their stories. So nice. if they want to talk about what they did, if they want to talk about current events, whatever they want to talk about, we are getting them talking. Um, another thing that happened for me in season two <clears throat> was I found a, uh, a support group. It was a for-profit uh, company called the warrior way mindset. And uh, man, they helped me tremendously with mm. my temper and, and just trying to become a better person. And uh, a lot of this, my book would have never happened had it been for them. Uh, you know, I had started writing it before there, mm -hmm. but as things got tougher and tougher, I started putting it down more and more. And uh, um, because of them, I finally finished it. And I credit a lot of that to me podcasting and continuing to keep doing it to where you grow this network and you eventually find something that helps you. Yeah. And so that's what I wanted to do with uh, uh, MUPS was was keep it, keep a podcaster podcasting. Um, we're not trying to make anybody Joe Rogan or, you know, if we help you and you become successful at it, great, you know. Yeah. But the the main purpose is is to get people talking, um, and get them interacting, and uh, document their stories so that in the in the future, um, our grandkids grandkids can look back and and hear firsthand the, the struggles that we went through these last 20 years. And yeah. uh, it's really, so that's, that's what the media therapy is then that yes. you, mm -hmm. yep. absolutely. Um, it, it's about getting people out of their houses. Um, so another thing that we, we try to do is we have a uh, podcast get togethers. 
nice. where the podcasters can meet up. Uh, we want to have a guest speaker talk, some some dinner, couple day hangout, and and get people used to being back out socializing. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's it's no secret that America has a a mental health problem. Um, mm-hmm. it, it is a problem that we have left in the closet and and did not do anything about and and it has put us into this situation yeah. it's not a, a veteran problem it's not a a first responder problem it's a human problem um mm-hmm. so it, it you don't have to relate it to a job trauma is trauma is trauma yeah, i was just gonna say people have trauma in ways that they don't think it's trauma but it truly is and yeah. You know, I have done several podcasts on that because I think it is, just as you're doing, important to make awareness of people that uh, people may be thinking, oh, my God, that's me. Yeah. And and seek the help, you know, get the help. You know, that's the <clears throat> that's the toughest part, because uh, the one thing that crosses over with just about everybody is is a couple different symptoms, um, and that's depression Mm-hmm. and anger yeah so it, it those are two common problems regardless of what your trauma is uh the triggers and and how you deal with them and stuff like that may all vary mm-hmm. but uh um those two symptoms kind of go hand in hand and absolutely uh, the the problem with that is is we all have that first hurdle and that first hurdle is learning how to forgive yourself and and love yourself. Yeah. After that, it's taking responsibility for what you had done and begin the process of fixing it. And uh those are some tough steps. Yeah. You know, and I think that's another reason why veterans stay medicated for so long because they don't have to put in the hard work to feel mm. better yeah. or not feel at all, either one. Yeah. So but uh, yeah, so that's, you know, the podcasting brought me some some uh, amazing things. And I think it brings a lot of veterans amazing opportunities and uh, amazing connections. Um, not to mention with all the like-minded people that they're going to interact with, they now have lifelines. You yeah. know, they make friends and they have phone and I have used it myself. I have called people that I've only met a couple times in person and and met online and just had them Talk. turn listen to me as I was bawling my eyes out. Yeah. And uh it is a very important step. Um mm-hmm. rest will come in time, you know. To and be then- vulnerable, to to allow, give yourself permission to be vulnerable and understand you aren't perfect and yep. nobody should ever expect you to be perfect. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh the last program that we created was called uh, words from warriors and uh, that is for our authors poets bloggers all those types of things and uh, we got a couple programs there we help them get published we help them write Um, we have actually taken on some some uh, writing projects um, that are amazing stuff is stuff i'm not able to release yet but uh mm-hmm. behind the scenes we're working on some really cool stuff and uh it's an amazing because those books are going to live forever um you know people are going to be able to to read these That's documents exactly right of the things that happened and uh have a vision not of just what's taught in school anymore but a vision of what really took place um since vietnam you know we're we're the one of the first and the few that actually came out and have been pretty vocal about our feelings and our thoughts and and what had happened over there so i think a lot of good stuff will come from that and and down the road if people decide to change history or rewrite it or whatever they want to do people can do a little bit of digging and still hear the the true stories from people that lived it and with that you know all of this stuff takes money to to keep going and so another thing that we did with words from warriors is we created a magazine Um, all the veterans that are 
part of Words from Warriors get to write um, for that magazine. Um, right now, it's strictly digital. Uh, and, you know, a subscription is like $25 a year is, is what mm -hmm. it costs. Um, so affordable. Every three months. Yeah, it's $8 every three months or $25 mm -hmm. a year. Um, and there's there's four issues a year. So that's one of the way that we we help um, fund some of these uh, these projects that we do. Uh, do you have the, sponsors for your radio um, um, channel yet? Not yet. Um, we really haven't pushed it uh, just because uh, we're still kind of getting where we need to be um, to say, uh, I want to have a few more DJs actually live DJing before, mm -hmm. you know, we do that. And and I want it to be um, set in stone. We've had to change so many things because uh, the radio station was the first project. Mm -hmm. And when it started, we never thought it would be a, a nonprofit. We never thought it would have three stations, you know, so there was no infrastructure. It was mm -hmm. literally us just grabbing music, <laughs> throwing it on and, and occasionally getting on and having a good time and talking to whoever was listening. Nice. And I did not expect it to grow <laughs> the way it did. Um, but it has taken me all over this country because mm -hmm. uh, I go to as many uh, uh, veteran events wherever our uh, artists that are on our radio station are performing. And I try to live stream as many of them as I can a year. Oh, nice. So that people can now see them hear them um and not necessarily have to be oh darn they didn't come to my state this year you know yeah. they can experience it um so this year we've got uh three hero stock events that we're going to be live streaming um we're hosting what cities what cities uh nashville is mm -hmm. one of the first one is here in rolla missouri um that's mm -hmm. the one we're um sponsoring and then there's um, one in Nashville the following month in in uh, uh, July. So June 29th is Rolla. I don't know the exact date yet in Nashville, but it's in July. Mm -hmm. And there's two going to happen in Nebraska uh, in the fall. Awesome. So it's amazing times. I went last year. I ended up streaming eight, almost eight hours of the event. <laughs> and, uh, I had such a great time. Oh. Um, so if you ever get the chance to go to a hero stock, I strongly recommend it. Uh, mm -hmm. This year is the first year that they uh, <clears throat> have decided to utilize all veteran bands. Um, so they found That's the majority true. of these, these artists from our radio station. That's how nice. We... Nice. And so there's been a lot of cool things that happen with it. And it's just part of, why it's grown so fast that we haven't been able to really sit down and build the, the structure around it to control it. But uh, we've had artists get invited to go to uh, Zach Brown's uh, camp yeah. Southern ground uh, hit for hero week. It's a oh, uh, awesome. Yeah. I know event. all about it. Oh yeah. yeah. So I, I think last year we had six, seven artists get selected. Oh, so good. Yeah, and there's a few that have have signed up and and applied for to be a part of Operation Encore. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's just it's just really cool to see this type of stuff happening. Um, Hero Stock has already booked artists all the way out to 2026, I think. <laughs> Super. So, and all of them are coming from our uh, our uh, radio station. On top of that, mm -hmm. um, they're trying to get uh names that are going to really draw crowds for these veteran bands to open for like jelly roll and mm -hmm. kid Rock, stuff like that yeah. so and they all support the veterans for sure yeah it was it was so cool the first year um there mm -hmm. were several artists that said you know this was the largest crowd i've ever performed for and uh to get these artists out of little local bars you know playing for a few mm -hmm. people having a few drinks and eating that didn't even come for the band and paid them no attention yeah. to people that came to see them, you know? Nice. So good really for them. Really cool. uh -huh. Yeah. I loved it. And, uh, you know, my hat's off to hero stock. They, that organization is amazing. So awesome. I can't say enough good stuff about it, 
but uh <clears throat> so with that that's where we created heroes voice media foundation and uh we wrapped all of this up into one nonprofit. Um, we're currently now trying to work with people to get donations for microphones, uh, little mixing boards, the the basic stuff that people would use to start a podcast mm -hmm. so that we can give it to veterans that want a podcast, but yeah. don't can't afford or don't know how to get started. Um, so we want to kind of create some podcasts in a box type um, kits that we can mm -hmm. donate to them if they need some help and and who awesome. knows maybe if they stick with it and they they grow they'll pass it on to another veteran to, nice. to help as they expand but uh that's where we are now is uh trying to finalize all the the non-profit paperwork that comes with it you know how uncle sam yeah. loves paperwork <laughs> <laughs> and uh um trying to put things like little donations and stuff like that out there to, uh, to help these artists go. Um, our big, big goal. And, and this will happen before I die. I, uh, I've already started working on it with a few organizations, but we want to see what's called the VMAs, um, the veteran music awards. And oh, wow, that would be awesome. Absolutely. Um, our goal is to get it to be just like the CMAs. We want it. Mm. We want veterans that have succeeded and made it, you know, they served their country and then they made it to iconic Amazing. levels in music. We want them to host it. Yes. We want these 10 to 12 independent uh, veteran bands um, go through some sort of selection process and let America select them and then have them be present for these awards, have them get a chance to play on the stage, walk the red carpet, get the interviews and the cameras mm -hmm. and everything going. And, you know, like I tell people, you know, not all these guys will be th the next Garth Brooks, but uh, mm. for that one day, that one day they can be. Yeah. I think it's really cool. Um, and I want to do it to where it raises money for some sort of veteran um, charity. And uh, every year, maybe we select a different um, veteran nonprofit out there to help um, a lot of people didn't know this, uh, you might being from Georgia, um, but there is what's called, uh, the Miss America veteran pageant. I did and, not know that. No. Yep. So the, the finals are always in Atlanta. It's ran just like the Miss America pageant. You have to win your state to be able to represent, mm -hmm. had to have served or currently serving. And, uh, the end goal is that they do that event to raise money for uh, a, an organization out there that helps provide shelters for homeless female veterans with kids wow. because not a lot of shelters will take kids. Yeah. And so I, that's where I came up with that idea. I thought it was an amazing thing to do and it kills so many birds at the same time. Yeah. yeah. And so I, there's a few organizations that are out there helping me and, and we're working hard to, to make that a goal and make it happen. Yeah. You should um, contact. And uh, I listened to um, 101.5 uh, and Tug Coward is a big veteran um, supporter and he's always introducing veteran artists too. So you should get with him. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll have to look him up. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. You know, and and then the last thing that we've created is uh, we've got a TV channel, um, a Roku channel. Oh, good. Yep, it's got uh, our veteran our veteran podcasters are on there, and then just because I'm a huge fan of the old stuff, you know, before the MySpace and all the other cool <laughs> stuff we have now, we once had a thing called MTV that oh yes, oh yes, music videos. <laughs> CMT music videos, uh, MTV music videos, mm -hmm. no shows. Great time. Great time to be a kid. I loved it. Yeah. So on that channel, we created what's called MMTV, military music television. And nice. it's all the artists that are on our uh, radio station that have made music videos. And cool. all it does is play music videos from those artists. That's very cool. All so, right. We're 
I think I have most of that in my show notes, but definitely I'll, excuse me, I'll make sure I do that. Well, time has flown by. Um, so excited about what you're doing. I think it's really a great thing. And uh, we'll need to see how we can collaborate so that we can help you see some of your vision. But Absolutely. as always, we uh, are going to share my slide that has contact information. Those of you that are artists, the musicians, singers, whatnot, that want to get on the radio and uh, take advantage of what he's doing, I'm going to share Donald's information and everything will be on my YouTube channel, Vicki Nethling. So please subscribe so you can get that as well as my findyourleadershipconfidence.com. So the website is words, that, that's, I'm kind of slurring my words, wordsfromwarriors.org and then Donald Dunn. So wordsfromwarriors.org and then Facebook is Veteran Voice Radio, as well as Instagram. Again, Veteran Voice Radio. So, Don, go ahead and talk to us about what they'll find, again, on the website. Okay. And um, anything that you might have coming up on Facebook or Instagram in July that, that would be uh, something that they should look for. Okay. So, Words from Warriors is uh, a place you can go. You can purchase uh, veteran uh, um, books. So what we do for for anybody that is part of that program, we link um, from our page to their Amazon spot. For, so awesome. if you want to buy directly from them, you can. Um, we also have multiple uh, things like our our magazine. You can download my book. Um, you can get the audio book, the ebook, or a signed copy from there. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like I said, the, the magazine as well. And then if you're interested in being a, a author and you're a veteran, all you got to do is, uh, fill out the little, uh, form there and send it to us or, or just reach out and, and message me and uh, we'll mm -hmm. get you on, um, to be part of any of our programs, we take, uh, veterans and we take the dependents of veterans. So mm -hmm. if you are a spouse or a son or daughter of a veteran, you still qualify to be part of our program. Um, mm -hmm. The whole idea behind this is, is you guys were yanked and moved around just like that. <laughs> so um, we want to help them as well um, be a part of it. And then mm -hmm. uh, if you go to Facebook, um, Veteran Voice Radio, from there, you'll find anything from uh, updates from the artists, um, profiles. You can go to veteranvoiceradio.com and uh, there you can find our stations. Um, all the bios and pictures and the songs of the artists are all on there as well. And uh, as well as you can sign up as an artist at any of those places. Um, all these programs you know, there's only five of us or four of us that, that run this program. So no matter what contact you use, you're going to reach some, one of us and we'll awesome. get you set up. Um, however you're looking to be set up. Um, if you want to be a part of this to help, there's tons and tons of ways that you can do it. Um, we are always looking for DJs. So if you want to donate an hour or two a week to, to just be a DJ on our radio station, you are more than welcome to come aboard um we provide all the training all you need is an internet uh source that's all you need and uh awesome. trust me you will have a lot of fun you know a <laughs> lot of people enjoy it um oh, good but other than that that's that's really about it and then if if you want to watch my my podcast it's it's spirits with uh or spirits and stories with donald dunn um and you can find that at any place that you go um to include Facebook, you'll see videos and stuff of my, uh, my podcast. So. Perfect. Well, Donald, it was wonderful chatting with you today and I definitely want to uh, keep you on my radar for things that we could do together to help promote. If you have any special events coming up, you know, just give me a couple months uh, advance notice of it so that we get it out there on time for you to promote. But um 
doing wonderful things. And I know for whatever reason, there's a lot of music in in the military uh, world out there. And so Absolutely. let's, let's celebrate all that. Absolutely. As always, I remind everyone that life is a journey and it's up to you to enjoy the ride. This is Vicki Nethling signing off. Thank you for tuning into the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast with Vicki Nethling, where we share impactful lessons that help you grow as an individual, grow your confidence, and find the positive and good within you so you powerfully and authentically become the best version of yourself. Remember to visit our website at www.findyourleadershipconfidence.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast.